Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Natisha and today I kind of wanted to start um, a video basically going through um, this Daily Grace study guide um, on the topic of prayer or pray. Um, I did a poll on my community tab a couple of months ago, about three months ago, and asking if anybody would be interested in doing one of two um, study guides together online and it was between this and I think search the word and they initially search the word was like it was blowing out the water but then pray won the race so we're going to do a little bit of this study guide together um basically I'm going to break it down to um it's it's a four week study or five week study and I'm only going to do in detail kind of the first day of each week together here on the YouTube and I may summarize what I learned because um, they do five days out of the week day two three four and five out of the week so that is my goal I've been wanting to do this study guide on my video or on my channel for a while and I just I don't know what the hold back is for it I don't know but and then I've already spoken to the company and um, I am um, given the understanding that I can't really share too much of their word for word um, information that they provide in the study. So I'm trying to do the best I can with presenting this study and, and um, doing well with it. So again, hello. Um, so this study is called Praying, Cultivating a Passionate Practice of Prayer. Um, my tools, again, is this a study guide. I have a big pencil, normal pencil. I have my Daily Grace highlighters on deck. And I have a Bible that I am hoping that the lettering is big enough for you guys to read. So let's just get on into this. First of all, Daily Grace has the cutest um, study guys like ever. Like I want them all. I want them all. So to start out, the study guide is giving us study suggestions. First with suggesting study tools. It's saying, of course, have a Bible on hand. Um, this book and a journal um, to write your notes and prayers if you like. I just write in this book per se. And um, pens, pencils, highlighters, and a dictionary to help you with unfamiliar words. On this side, it's just giving tips on how to use the study. You definitely want to enter the study with prayer. You want to read the suggested reading from the Bible first before starting the um, passages. And then you, you want to read the daily written content provided for that day of studying. And then you want to answer the questions that they have towards the end of that day. It also is going to give you tips on how to study the Bible. Um, it's a section for observation, comparison, interpretation, and application. Also, I've noticed that um, on more of the newer study guides, they provide on each one the attributes of the attributes of God. So it gives us all kinds of attributes of God. We're going to read one. Uh, let's read patient. God is long suffering and enduring. He gives ample opportunity for people to turn toward him. And they give the scriptures that will point you into the direction of where they got this information from. Romans 2.4, 2 Peter 3.9, Psalms 86.15. So that's a nice resource to have. Um, and then it's given us a section of the meta narrative of scripture. We have creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. And they give you um, a little bit to back those topics up. And let's just go into this part. This is so pretty. 
Prayer is a place to tip our full hearts over and let them spill out to God's listening ear. Amen. So with this study, like I said, it's five weeks. One, two, three, four, five, and in closing. I'm going to do day one of each week with you guys here. Um, but I plan. Like A lot of my things never go as planned, so... I'm just going with the flow with it for the most part. Ideally, I would love to like do day one with you guys on Monday. Come back here on Saturday. Actually, they go to day seven. So it's like a Monday to Sunday situation. I thought it was five days. So ideally, I would like to come back here on Sunday. Do a summary of all the rest of the days. And then back here on Monday each week. That's the goal. Don't know if it's going to happen that way. Um... I hope it does. Pray for me that it does. If it doesn't, please have a little bit of grace. And I mean, if push come to shove, sorry. If push come to shove, like the weeks and days are a little bit longer than how they have it planned on here. I'm still going to kind of stick to the doing the day ones on camera with you guys. So, and I really want to kind of get this done soon because they're going to be doing the advent. Um, study. So let's get on into this. This is week one, and week one is going to be about prayer foundations. So I am going to read this. Ooh. Prayer is hard, harder than it seems it should be. We are busy, distracted, and unsure if our time spent in prayer is actually un amounting to anything. We want to have a vibrant, passionate prayer life, but instead we have one that is often cold and apathetic. What is the cure for this? It is a true biblical understanding of prayer. If prayer is not our passion or priority, it is only because we do not yet understand it rightly. This week we will con um, construct a solid theological foundation of prayer on which we will build for the rest of the study. Together, we will study prayer as God designed it and apply biblical truths about prayer to our lives. <clears throat> and then the lackluster life of prayer we once knew will grow suddenly but consistently for it takes time into one that is purposefully meaningful and powerful. So before we go into the week one study, let's... <clears throat> Let's uh, do a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this blessed day. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to do a study on prayer. We thank you, Lord, for your holy word. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus that the holy word that we studied today may it resonate in our hearts. May we be enlightened with your truth and your truth only. And we pray over everybody that is in attendance to this video that stumbles over this video that something catches their eye and that they are able to <clears throat> dive into the word deeper too um just from viewing this channel lord we thank you for hearing our prayers and answering them in the name of jesus amen all right <clears throat> all right so we're in week one and let's say it up here and let's back her up back her up back her up Week one, day one. And this says over here, Jesus' life is marked by the practice of prayer. So I'm going to just put this right here. All right. So the title of this week is, um, can you see? No. It's called Pray, Pray Like Jesus. And on this row right here, it gives us our scriptures that we're going to read. So, one of the scriptures is Luke 5, Luke 5, chap or chapter 5, verse 16, Matthew chapter 26, 36, Mark 1, 12, and John 6. 15. So we're going to just go ahead and do that together. Look. Look. 
16. And I picked up this Bible because it is um, bigger print. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I'm hoping that. Um, I'm hoping you can see it. Well, we're going to go right here. Right here, and it says, And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. The next reading is Matthew 26, 36. <clears throat> then come of Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Uh, Mark 1, I'm going the right way, Mark 1, 12. Immediately the spirit driveth him, yeah, and immediately the spirit driveth, driveth him into the wilderness. The wilderness has become a thing. All right, the last one is John 6 15. Right here. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. All right. So I'm going to take the opportunity. We're going to pause and I'm going to read these passages and I will come back on here um, with a summary of it. Okay, so I'm back, <clears throat> and, I, and I use these two colors um, from my Daily Grace highlighters. So they have, so one says give thanks, the other one says abide in him. So these are the two colors that I chose to use. So I'm going to kind of just summarize what I read and what I gathered from the reading, um, passage reading. Um, in this section, it just talks about how easily... There are so many things in this world that can distract us. Um, and especially when we get in the stance of prayer, like your phone notifications are going off. You are, you know, instantly tired and yawning. And um, basically, I'm going to read what I highlighted. Many hindrances we experience in our prayer lives affect how we move forward going into praying. Um, but prayer is definitely meant to be an intimate conversation with God. It um, allows us to provide, you know, our requests, allows us to praise freely, and it allows our um, confessions to be forgiven. So basically, this is an intimate setting with you and God, and it is an effective setting with you and God. So, and Jesus models this for us. Um, all the scriptures that we read talked about how he made it intentional to go and pray. Um, he made it intentional to walk away from everyday busyness, walk away from people, from things, from everything, and set time to pray. So if we are kingdom workers and we're trying to be like Christ and if Christ is setting time and walking away to go pray, if Christ is setting time to have these intimate conversations with God, we are to do the same because he is the model for us. What he did here on earth or how we should be going through um, our life doing too. So 
um, he bit like like they said it down here. He had intentional solitude. So intentional solitude to sum it up is just basically you're making the time to be quiet and sit with Christ. Um, you can do a little bit of talking, but you can also do a little bit of quietness and just be still and try to hear the small, still voice from the Lord. Um, <clears throat> Jesus withdrew from daily life and clamoring crowds to commune alone with God. And then on this other side, <clears throat> um, through prayer, when you have that um, intimate prayer with God, he is able to work through you and complete his missions that he has for us and for the world. So if you are not allowing yourself to humble, be in a humble stance and, and get down and pray, he's not able to do the work that he wants to through, do through you. And <clears throat> Jesus knew that like he was, Jesus was not able to move forward unless he had that conversation with God on how he should move forward in life. So, and then, um, I highlighted in his perfect sovereignty, God uses our prayers to move again. That's what I just said, <laughs> his mission, mission forward. And then I'm down at the bottom. I wrote or highlighted we can do this by pushing aside the excuses and distractions, making time every day to speak with God through prayer. And, you know, prayer can be as simple as you just sitting at your desk and having a conversation, sitting in your bed, having a conversation, kneeling down and having a conversation, um, sitting in a chair. Um, it's just getting to the point where you're just kind of just talking to the Lord on a regular basis. So here are the daily questions. I'm just going to show you the questions. I am not going to show you my responses <clears throat> to the questions. Um, and, and I don't think I said this in the beginning, but this is not a, this is a topical study. So pray to topical study, just so I can get that out there. But question number one, how would you describe your prayer life right now? In what ways would you like to see your prayer life grow through this study? Actually, I can probably answer this without like writing it. <clears throat> it may take long. Um, my prayer life, personally, um, I feel like I pray constantly. Um, I work from home, so it gives me an opportunity to sit at when I'm sitting at my desk. Sometimes I just break out into prayer as I'm working, um, I pray, um, over me and my kids every night. I've, I've gotten to the point where I don't feel comfortable, um, proceeding with sleep without prayer. I will wake up at 12, one o'clock in the morning. And if I didn't pray over my kids, I will go in their room, lay hands on them, put the, um, vessel on them and pray. I pray over me and my kids in the morning when I'm dropping them off to school, or when they're about to go to um the bus but as far as like how would i like um and in, in what ways would you like to see your prayer life grow through this study i will i would say the one thing that i hope that i'm grasping for is a little bit of like motivation to go deeper because i don't write my prayers down like you know i have a prayer war binder that I've had for over a year and only one prayer is written in it. So I would like to go more in depth with my prayers and I would like to write them down. So hopefully this motivates me to get to that place. Um, how does examining Jesus intentional missionality and continuous practice of prayer impact you? Following after Jesus' footsteps is like, it's like the ultimate goal. And when you read stuff like this, and when it's flat in your face, um, it allows you to see like, okay, he was on this world. This is Jesus. Jesus was God. Um, said the perfect example for us. And I just need to keep that in my, the back of my mind. Like, you know what? He set the example for us, so we must proceed with it. 
And which one of the above characteristics of Jesus' prayer life is the area you would like to grow in most and why? Um, I would say, I don't know. I would say more so like the solitude. Um, to be perfectly honest, I would like to like just wake up early in the morning and just sit there and just pray. Not like, well, you know, because a lot of my praying, I'm I'm working or I'm sitting at my desk and I'm working. I just start praying or, you know, I'm down getting lunch and I just start praying in my kitchen. But I literally would like to just have a moment in the morning before anything starts and just sit there and pray and then sit in solitude for about 10 minutes without falling asleep after the prayer. So, yeah. And then we have this part, <clears throat> um, and it's just this, oh. this section over here just says, write a prayer expressing your desire for God to teach you to pray like Jesus, which I'm going to do that off camera. And this one says, write a prayer asking God to show you places and times you can step away from the busyness of life and be with him. So I'm going to write a prayer for both of these. And... Write a prayer that appeals to God to work in you, in and through you to accomplish his word. I'm going to work on writing a prayer for these three. And then I'm going to show y'all. And then that will be the end of day week one, day one. And then, you know, I'll come back with a summary for the rest, the rest of the week. But I'm going to actually work on writing a prayer for this and then I'll come back and show you guys. All right. Okay, so I am back with answering, giving prayers to the questions that um, has been prompted. Again, this is a study on prayer. So we're going from um, like one level to a more in-depth level of prayer. And so excuse my messy handwriting. It just, it's, just is what it is. <laughs> so this one says, write a prayer expressing your desire um, for God to teach you how to pray like Jesus. So my prayer is, um, simply dear heavenly father, Jesus set the perfect example of removing all distractions and noise to have an intimate relationship with you through prayer. I want to have my own personal relationship with you, Lord, that models how Jesus did when he walked on this earth. I didn't put that down, but I'm adding that. <laughs> Please help me to be intentional with my prayer time and prayer life. Thank you, Lord, with allowing me to read how Jesus prayed and helping me to do the same every day. Amen. Um, so this section says, write a prayer asking God to show you places and times you can step away from your busyness of life and be with him. So I wrote... Dear Heavenly Father, busyness and life distractions, distractions can sometimes be a hindrance to pursuing more intense, deep prayer with you. I pray that you help me to combat every distraction that creeps up um, to get in the way of my prayer life. I pray that you show the place and time I am I am to proceed with my prayer, and I, um, I want to thank you in advance. Amen. Um, this one says, write a prayer that appeals to God to work in and through you to accomplish his will in the world. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray, I, okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I have professed to do the will of God, but I know that I won't obtain the will without having an in-depth prayer life that goes beyond the surface level. Please guide my footsteps and lead me into the direction that you want me to go. Please soften up my heart um, on a continuing basis so that my heart seeks you in your will for me. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayers and answering them. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, so that was it. <laughs> Stay tuned for the summary of all the rest of the days out of this first week. 
and um yeah so so yes thank you for watching this video um keep seeking the kingdom of god and all his righteousness and i'll see you guys in the next video bye